I'm Brian Hamlet with Becoming a Business Owner, and welcome to the first ever episode of our new series, How I Got Started, where we interview entrepreneurs just like you who have started their business and find out the answers to the questions and the challenges that all of us face in starting a business. So stick around, watch episode one. Welcome to Becoming a Business Owner's new series, How I Got Started. And today we have the great opportunity of speaking to an entrepreneur his name being Matthew Martin, owner of MRM Photography, and we're going to learn a little bit about how he started his business. Good morning, Matthew. How are you? Doing great. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Fantastic. Now, we're going to dive right into this. So tell me a little bit about how you came up with the idea to get into the photography business. What was the motivation behind it? Well, it actually started uh, out of nowhere, actually. It was uh, during MBA school and... Uh, I wanted to get some experience starting my own business and I uh, had a marketing professor, Dr. Aravalis, who was amazing. And uh, he really pushed us to always look for something we could start, mm -hmm. spend our time trying to start a business because we're going to learn more from trying to start that business than we ever would by, you know, just reading a book. And yeah. so, um, the, you know, that was, I want to just go give him a hug now because it was the greatest advice I ever got. And um, so what happened was I was a big time paintball player and I noticed that there was just nowhere to find um, where to play paintball or where to, you know, see what's going on mm -hmm. in the area. And so I launched this website called paintballcarolina.com that was just a portal for players to come find out where they can go play at, get reviews of fields so they can find the good fields, whatever. Well, out of that, I found out that the paintball fields and the players really liked seeing pictures. And so... You know, I ran out to Best Buy, got a little cheap camera kit that would work, you know, a little zoom lens. It's like, you know, this thing's going to get shot up with paintballs. So <laughs> I'm just going to get something from Best Buy. I'm not going to go out and buy some high-end, you know, professional camera because this thing's going to be painted orange and pink <laughs> in a couple of weeks. And um, so I went out and started doing that and absolutely loved it. Um, it was, I actually enjoyed doing the pictures more than I liked playing. Oh, and it just oh. over time became um, to the point where I just, you know, that's all I look forward to doing was taking my camera out there, had my, you know, my mask on and trying to shoot through a mask was very hard. But, um, you know, it was great practice and it was, it was a lot of fun. So I guess uh, about a year ago, uh, last November, a friend of mine just approached me out of the blue and said, have you ever thought about doing portrait work? Um, and I honestly, no, <laughs> it never really crossed my mind. Um, and then, you know, she had just recently got married, didn't do engagement pictures, and she wanted, you know, something like that. And so I agreed to do it. I said, sure, we'll go try it out. So we went out um, downtown Belmont one night, shot some pictures. Um, she absolutely loved them. I love doing it. Um, so I started giving a little bit more thought, you know, do I really want to do this? So I want it to be more of just a hobby. Do I want it to be a real business? And honestly, at times, just didn't know. The only thing I knew was I really liked taking pictures. And I really liked seeing people's reactions when they saw the pictures. So you really capitalized on a passion for a passion right. that sounds like you discovered and then decided, can I turn this into something to actually support me and, and that I can do as a business? Exactly. Thank and um, so it kind of went on, you know, me kind of twiddling my thumbs and trying to decide what I want to do with it. And then uh, February rolled around and my cousin approached me about doing some family pictures for her. Um, with her husband and her daughter. And so we went out and we shot those. That was my first paid shot. So I was pretty excited about that. Nice. And uh, so at that point, you know, they love the pictures and I started getting good feedback from other family members. And it's like, okay, well maybe, you know, maybe this is something I can look at. And so I decided that for Easter, I was going to do a promotion. It's kind of like a, Hey, I'm out here kind of deal. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a really cheap, like, I think it was like $25 to come out and do a shoot. Um, just meet me at the park. I just camped out at the park all day. And, uh, you know, that went well. I had like, I want to think five people showed up to do it. And so I was really excited. I was like, woohoo! <laughs> people actually want me to, to shoot them. And uh, I really liked the way some of those turned out. I, I booked a wedding out of it. I booked a couple more like actual shoots out of it. And, um, you know, that was just a great kind of, you know, introduction to it. And from there, once I did that, I knew, okay, this, this could actually be something that I can do and actually make some money at. 
And uh, that's when I started really thinking seriously about how to structure all of this and, and kind of move forward. So I would say it was that point where I kind of made the decision, okay, I'm really going to try this. So as you're describing, um, put in perspective for us, how long from when you first thought about, I think I want to make this to, into a business to you actually operating out of business? How long was that period? Um, I said, I first started really thinking about it in February when I got paid. Mm -hmm. um, I started thinking, okay, well, maybe this came. And so I started looking at you know, how much do other photographers make? How much do they charge? How much time do they put in? You know, am I, and you know, the big question, am I even good enough? Um, how much time is it going to take me to get to that level to where I can put out the pictures to compete with other professional photographers? And, um, you know, it kind of took me a while, a few months until I got to April. And then I said, okay, obviously people like what the pictures look like. And so that was a, a first step. But then it was a bigger step of how serious is this going to be? Is this going to be a part-time business where it's more of a hobby? Or is this going to be, I'm going to make this my career? And that took longer. Um, and April was more the point where I decided, okay, I could definitely do this as a part-time gig. Mm -hmm. Do it on the weekends, whatever. Um, I really didn't think, okay, this could work until late June, early July. Um, so, you know, a solid... I would say six months six of months. getting there. Um, and really what did it then was I got a big commercial contract. And that's when I, I, I got published for pictures before for paintball pictures and a paintball magazine. But in, uh, I was in the September edition, but I actually shot it in June of this year for Charlotte magazine. And that was kind of like the first time I could go out to Barnes and Noble, buy a magazine and say, there's my there picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I had, I think it was 13 or 14 pictures in that edition. I started an advertising spread. And at that point I was like, okay, this could really work. And, you know, so it took a while. I it wasn't it. something that Six was just. Months. So now this cool. is something that you actually had a full-time job and you started on the side and then worked it into a part-time gig. And then six months later, you turn it into a full-time business. Right. Gotcha. Right. It's been a transition. It's, uh, um, it's, I've never been somebody who was willing to say, I'm just going to throw everything away that I've got and just jump right in head first. It's always, I'm, I'm not, I'm pretty risk averse. So, um, I want to, you know, protect whatever income I can and kind of gradually work into it. Now, that's not to say that I haven't made big decisions along the way to facilitate it because, you know, just recently about a month ago, you know, I do have two master's degrees, one's an MBA. So, you know, there are recruiters coming and saying, Hey, you know, we have this job. We found, you know, my resumes are still floating around on monster.com and career builder and all those places. Um, and so, you know, they'll come to me and say, we have this job. We really want you to do this job. And so it's, it is very hard at times when you come along and you say, here's a guaranteed, job that will give you the money that you want and here it is the only thing is you have to give up what you want to do and wow. that's and that's the um that's where it gets really tough is to make those decisions where you say here's a guaranteed amount of money but you don't love that here's what you really want to do and you love doing but it's going to take some time to get it there so those decisions are tough and i've made them and looking back, they were the best decisions I've made. Um, so much happier now than I would have been if I were, you know, in those jobs. So, if anybody out there is thinking about it, follow what you love to do, and it'll pay off in there. Promise. That's fantastic. Sounds like you know puts new meaning around that. You know, do what you love and love what you do. And the fact that you actually turn down opportunities that some of us may look back at or look at ourselves and say, okay, well, it, it's easier to go down that road. And I'm not going to enjoy it, but, but it's just easier. And maybe I should take that path. And, and that's fantastic to hear that's what you decided to do to keep with what you wanted to do. Now, let me ask you a question. You've kind of mentioned a few different types of uh, photography services you offer. Uh, you know, mentioned some commercial projects, mentioned some consumer projects. How did you decide the services you were going to offer that you were going to actually offer work for commercial businesses 
and for weddings, birthdays, or, or events. How'd you come up with that decision? Uh, trial and error. Uh, it started out with, um, I will take anything. <laughs> because, you know, how do you know what you're going to, in, in my kind of um, business and the service industry like this, how do you know what you really like to do until you do it? And that was kind of my philosophy is I will try anything once. And so if somebody came along and said, I really want you to shoot a wedding. Okay. I really want you to do product photography. Okay. I'll try it. You know, anything. You could ask me to go take pictures of your dog walking around your yard. If you're going to pay me, I'm there. And that, that was kind of my philosophy. And it's been like that, you know, the trial and error where now I'm figuring out, I love doing commercial work. I love to go and take, you know, headshots or advertising photos for you can use on brochures or websites or whatever. I love doing product photography, mm -hmm. um, especially shooting jewelry. I think it's some of the most challenging work that I've done, even though your, your subject's not moving, to try to get a diamond just right is exceptionally hard. Um, and I really love that challenge. Um, the other thing I love doing is weddings. I love the emotion involved in it. I love capturing those moments for people. And there's absolutely nothing better than to see the bride and groom's reactions when they see those pictures. Um, it's just, it is so much more fulfilling than any paycheck will ever be um, to just see that. So those, you know, those are the ones that I really try to focus on the weddings and commercial work. That's what I want to fill up with. Now, that's not to say I'm not going to do the family portraits or, you know, dog portraits or whatever else, you know, I'll do those as they come. But what I'm primarily trying to get the, the what I'm projecting out to clients is the commercial and the weddings. That's what I want to book. And uh, that's only came by you know, trial and error. Sure. Sure. Fantastic. Sounds like kind of the, the normal when you're first getting started, not sure what I'm going to offer, how I'm going to offer it. And this leads to my next question, which is one of the first can be considered critical decisions, but I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, it's one of the most difficult. How did you determine the pricing for your services? You don't actually have to share your pricing, but how did you decide what you were going to charge? What was that process you went through? Uh, well, at first it was brutal. I had no idea. So I just made a number up and just, saw how it went um as, as you get some feedback from it you start to realize you know either it's working or it's not um but for me what i figured out was i actually started running the numbers i put everything in a spreadsheet when i made that decision you know this is something i'm going to try to do i had to run the numbers and say is this even possible can i make enough money um and when I started doing that, I started realizing what I was charging. When I first started, it was like $100 to do a portrait session. Well, by the time you calculate in the driving there, the driving back, the editing, the shooting, the equipment, the insurance, the, you know, all this stuff, you're like, $100? <laughs> I'm going to go out of business next week. So um, it was very, it was very eye-opening, but it's also been very difficult, especially in the economy right now. Um, you know, and I'll be open to what I charge. I charge $350 for any type of, you know, one hour family session, engagement session, any of that stuff like this one price, $350. It is very tough to go to somebody in the middle of a recession and say it's $350 for an hour. Um, but the, the biggest thing I think for entrepreneurs and the biggest thing that I still struggle with is having confidence in what you sell, what it is you do. And I think it takes time to develop it. I'm starting to get, you know, more every day I have more. You know, every shoot I do and I see the results, I get a little bit more confident. And I think that's the the secret for me is getting that confidence because then you're able to go to clients and say, This is what I charge and this is why I'm worth it. And then it's a lot easier. And but the biggest thing to me was I found a mentor. I was so lucky. Um, I, what I did was I looked around at all the different Charlotte photographers that I really liked, and I sent a few of them emails and just said, hey, I love your work. I would love to be able just to talk to you, um, even if it's just exchange some emails, um, just to pick your brain a little bit. And I was so lucky that one of them, uh, Christy Falls Photography, Christy has been absolutely amazing. She's answered a lot of questions I've had, uh, listened to me vent a lot. I mean, it's been um, – great and i can't even 
put in the words how, how much it's helped to just have somebody who's went through it, who's in the same industry and is willing to, to give you that kind of help. And she turned me on to, um, it was a guide that was put out by another photographer. Um, is, I can't remember exactly what it's called now. I can find it somewhere. But it's uh, you know, the ultimate pricing guide for weddings. And it's just a step-by-step worksheet that she put together. And it comes with an Excel sheet that just let you plug in how much your time is worth, how much time you put into it, price all your stuff, and it just really helps you price a wedding. Um, now, granted, you have to adjust that for markets and whatnot, but the biggest thing there was that I was able to find somebody's worksheet of how they put it together, and it helped me think. So it helped me figure out, okay, I need to think about this. I need to think about how much prints cost. I need to think about how much insurance I have to have for that shoot. And so when I was able to put all that together, it was able to give me a price that I could actually say, if I can charge this amount, I'm making a profit. Now, that's not to say that's what I charge right now because that's a goal price of when I, you know, when I get to the point where I want to be. And so I think, you know, as any startup, you have to offer incentives, you have to offer, you know, different kind of promotions to get things going. But I think it's so important to have a goal in mind that this is what my price is going to be when I get to full price because then you know what your service is worth. So you did a it sounds like you did a little bit of trial and error mixed with some competitive analysis, found a mentor out of that. Yes. And the mentor drove you to find some tools that are helping you really continue to work on that decision. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think I think pricing, even from talking to photographers that are firmly established, pricing always kind of changes mm-hmm. because you have to adjust with what the market is. You know, if, if the market around here in Charlotte, you know, it's not exactly at its peak right now. And so you have to adjust a little bit for that. I mean, everybody can't afford the full price that you could charge, you know, five, six years ago. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have, you kind of always have to adjust and be aware of the market. And, you know, it's, it's a constant thing, but I think if you understand, you know, a basic amount of what you need to be profitable, then all the rest of that is not a big decision. It's something you can easily adjust each year. Fantastic. So you, you got your business started or, or let's take it back to right before you were getting ready to start and you, you were doing it a little bit part time and you were in the beginning a little trial and error with the services you were going to offer, whatever you could get, as you mentioned, and even the pricing just starting with the initial price. What did you do or felt like you needed to have done by day one to be ready to go? So day <laughs> one, my doors are open. Tell us a little bit about what that was like preparing for that. Oh, man. Um, well, the first thing I did was I made sure I had all the legal stuff taken care of, you know, the business licenses, the tax ID numbers, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and real quick, did you use any kind of service for that or was it a local attorney you worked with or did you do it yourself online? It was all me online. Um, that's just the kind of way I've always been. I just jump right into it and figure it out on my own. Um, there was a uh, a photographer who has the guide up on the internet, and she's a pretty well known photographer. Um, and so it's really just step by step of what what paperwork you need to get done, where you need to file out, what you need to do to get a photography business started. And so that was very helpful, just to look at it and say, okay, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this. And then, but as far as actually filing all the paperwork, that was just me trying to figure it out because. When I was starting out, I had no money to go pay a local attorney or anything like that. It was, if it's going to get done, I'm going to have to do it. And um, I think that was the biggest thing for me in this in the whole startup process was I have to do everything. It's, you know, when you're used to the corporate world, you could say, okay, well, I can just have marketing do that, or I can just have, you know, whatever. Well, you are everything. So you have to, you know, if you don't know how to do it, you have to learn it and learn it quickly. Um so, you know, that was the first thing. The, the second thing I did, um, and maybe it's because I'm just at heart a numbers junkie, but I spread up, I set up a spreadsheet with everything so I could track all purchases, all expenses, all, every, I mean, just anything. And that's really helped me um, to just see, you know, where my money's going, where it's coming from. And so I can really dial into this is working, this is not working. 
Um, but then again, it's always an adjustment as you, as you go because you just can't. Some things just happen you can't see. You know, it just they just happen. Um, but really, that was really the two things that I needed before I launched. You know, besides just basic camera equipment to be able to do what I needed to do. Um, but I had most of that from when I was doing the the, the paintball stuff. I had a, at least a bare minimum to shoot with, and so I, I tried to tailor what shoots I was going to do with what equipment I had. So I wasn't trying to do product photography with you know the wrong kind of lenses. So I wanted to make sure that the work I was actually doing out trying to get was stuff that I could actually do without spending more money. Now you know later on that changed and kind of got in a little bit of issues with that, <laughs> but. Um, you know, at first it was just make sure I had enough equipment to do the very basic services I wanted to offer and then make sure I had a way of tracking everything and then make sure I was legal. And that was the three things that, you know, I tried to have in mind before I really launched. So so you got your, your business legally established and you, you kind of got your pricing and everything worked together. It sounds like you, you matched the current tools you had to what business you could go after. So tell us a little bit about what the first sale was like. How long did it take to, to get the first sale and, and, and how did that take place? <laughs> the first sale was actually uh, funny because I didn't actually try to get it. Um, the first sale came from, um, was actually uh, a wedding and it came out of, I had, when I signed up for my domain name, I signed up with GoDaddy and GoDaddy gave away like $50 worth of Google AdWords advertising for free. And I said, okay, well, what the heck? I'm going to sign up for it. I'm going to try it. I have no idea how this works. So I put together a really quick ad, threw it up on the internet. And when I did my, it was actually in April when I did my Easter shoot, my first real shoot, mm -hmm. you know, these, uh, this couple had found me through that and, you know, they were you know, interested in me doing a wedding. And so I said, well, hey, why don't you guys come out to the, the April promo shoot? And it only costs you $25. You can try me out. It's a quick little 20-minute shoot. If you don't like it, you're out of $25. If you do, we can do the wedding. Um, and so they came out, did the shoot, waited for, the, you know, for me to edit the pictures, get back to them. They liked the pictures, booked. That was it. Um, so it, was, it spoiled me because I thought everything was going to be that easy. But uh, definitely not. It was like that one thing happened, bam, bam, bam. And then it took um, four months before I got another wedding. Oh, so wow. it was, um, you know, sometimes things just kind of fall into place. And then other times it's, you know, the struggle to try to figure out what to do. Um, so the first sale was really easy. <laughs> it was through up Google AdWords and they found me. Um, but ever since then, it's been much more difficult. It's been much more of making sure that, you know, I have the Facebook page going. It's updated all the time. I, I, I threw up a blog early, was really inconsistent about writing on it. And uh, here recently, I've been trying to really focus on getting at least three or four posts a week. Um, and so that automatically goes to my Facebook and Twitter so that it's always showing up. Um, so I think, you know, ever since then, I've learned you know, how to how to make a sale a little bit more efficiently but um yeah that first sale was pretty awesome because it just sold itself <laughs> now it sounds like since then you've tried to do some low cost things to uh drum up some new business is there anything you've done in terms of like print ads or tv radio anything considered traditional marketing um no and because it's so expensive um for for what i make off a photo shoot I would have to have an, a really high um, rate of return from that to make it worth it. And I guess one of the benefits of being um, such a researcher is that I went out and I've read a lot of stuff from other photographers. I'm a member of the Professional Photographers of America and they send out a, a magazine once a month. Um, and one of the things they always talk about is, you know, what's, they do an industry study every year of what's working what's not and so you can learn from other photographers and so i've been really big on trying to do research into that stuff and one of the things that i keep seeing over and over and over again is that print ads really don't work that well and um 
in my experience, I've done, you know, some online advertising with certain websites that I think would target the right you know, clients. But even they don't give me anywhere near the return that I get from just being on Facebook and blogging or just having conversations with people on Twitter. The word of mouth and getting out and just being involved with people will get you so much more business than being in a print, you know, print magazine. So, you know, it is the cheaper way, but I also think it's the better way. Nice. Now, you, you mentioned the first one being easy, and then afterwards you're using things like Facebook, social media to reach out, engage, and talk to them and, and have your website and try to blog for a while. So you mentioned through that there may have been some times you had some very interesting sales with people or experiences with people. Can you share one or two of your horror stories of, of what's happened one time? Yeah. Um, well, you know, one time I was out of town at a wedding and I got this email from um, a lady from a, a pretty large company in Charlotte and they were having a corporate meeting, their annual meeting in Charlotte and they have about a thousand employees and they wanted to get a picture with all the employees in it with their um, delivery trucks around them so that they could see you know, what they were. Um, and so I said, okay, that's no problem. And she said, well, we need to shoot done in three days. And that would be a day after I got my phone and I was, you know, hopped on Amazon with a little app on my iPhone. I said, okay, I got to order this lens because I really need a, a very wide angle lens to capture a thousand people. And so I got two day ship. It was at my house when I got home. When I get home the day before the shoot, I get a phone call. Oh, well, my boss decided that he wants to use the photographer they used last time. We don't need your services anymore. Great. I'm out of a thousand dollars that I just paid for this new lens. And there's no business directly coming from it. Um, so those kind of horror stories can happen, um, you know, but at the same time, like three days later, I got booked for a, another shoot, which was, you know, for an event. And it was this really old house and the rooms are very small. Well, it's very hard to take pictures, you know, you get a picture of a person in a very small room without a wide angle lens. So it just happened to be that I could really use the wide angle lens for that shoot, got the shoots I needed, you know, and it was able to, to pay for itself that way. And another very similar situation with some product photography where I bought a macro lens, um, which was another $1,100 where I'd spend it in anticipation of this business. They had to cancel the shoot, never got it booked. Um, but then that's really helped me out with my detail shots at weddings or getting the wedding bands and you know other little details. And that's kind of been what people have, you know, told me those are some of my strongest shots. It's what people really like to see is the detail stuff. And, you know, it's worked itself out to where they've, you know, I'm glad I have them now because they ended up you know, turning out great. So you actually had a situation where your bad experience in a sales experience actually turned out for the positive. You, you, you had a commercial client, thousand people you've got to take a photo of. You have to buy a, over $1,000 lens for it. They cancel, but you still get to use the lens for another project booked, you know, shortly thereafter that became useful. Yeah, it just uh, it's funny how that works out. It's um, you know, I read somewhere and I can't remember where. It's, you know, when you're really struggling to make a decision, or you know, and you're in your own business and you're trying to get going, to just jump and the net will appear. And you know, it's it's funny. You think about you're like, oh, that's just crazy. That's somebody just saying something to tell you to to act. But the thing is, it's happened so many times to me over and over and over where you make that big decision. And somehow it always works out. I don't understand how I think the universe just works that way. So if you follow what you love and you make the decision that I'm going to do it, it just works out. That's interesting. That It sounds like they always say entrepreneurs are the eternal optimist. Would you consider yourself an optimist? Oh, definitely. Definitely. All right. Well, then what all optim optimists face at some point in time, especially business owners, is their biggest challenge. What 
to this point today has been the biggest challenge that <clears throat> you have either dealt with or you're still dealing with today in your business? Well, I think for me, um, for me, it's a um, when you take a picture, every single picture is a piece of you. So it's the way you see the world. And so when when I get any kind of negative feedback or people don't just love it, it I take it very personally because it's, you know, it's just the way I look at it, you know. Um, and I think that's the way most artists are. And, you know, for me personally, it's been a confidence struggle from the very beginning of you constantly asking yourself, am I good enough? And that's something that I don't think will ever go away. But that, you know, that was my biggest struggle when I launched the thing too, was that fear of so everybody's going to look at me and say, oh, it's just somebody else with a camera who thinks there's a, they're a photographer. And that was, it took me a long time to get a Facebook page for that reason, because I was very, very scared of what people were going to say when they saw that thing. And I'm still struggling with it today. I still look at it and go, you know, am I good enough? I compare myself to photographers all the time. But I also think that that struggle is my biggest asset because that's what drives me to get better all the time because I'm always scared I'm not good enough. So I'm always either watching some kind of online learning tutorial or doing a workshop or, you know, just out shooting anything I can do to get better. And I think that you always got to try to figure out how to do that. Take your, what you're struggling with and make it an asset. That's the only way to get past it. So you took your biggest challenge, turn it to your biggest positive, your motivator and your driver. So, and that's just a fantastic lesson for any business owner to learn. So let me ask you, what one piece of advice would you give to either a business owner that is established or even as someone who's thinking about starting a business? What would you tell them? Do it. <laughs> um, I Thank you for not including the just and do it so Nike doesn't come after us. <laughs> well, you have to change it like 20%, right? So we just drop the just. So um, I think the biggest thing is to, even though you struggle with confidence, I think all entrepreneurs do it. You, you look at it and you say, you know, is whatever I'm offering something that people want? Are people going to take me seriously? You know, there's, there's only one person you need to convince, and that's yourself. And just do it. Because if you feel like there's a need for it, I guarantee you there's somebody else who agrees with you. So just get out there, follow what you want to do, and just start doing it because you will learn everything you need to learn along the way. And if you fail, that's great because you just learned what doesn't work. And that's, you know, everybody talks about this big fear of failure, and everybody has it, but you've got to be willing to risk it to get that reward at the end. Because that's, you can't get there by taking the easy route. You have to throw yourself out there and put yourself out there so that people can criticize you or lavish praise on you. It's, it's, you know, you have to do it. And that was the hardest thing for me was just actually taking that step to say, okay, I am a photographer. It took me until I mean, almost a year before I felt comfortable when somebody asked me, you know, what do you, what are you, what do you do? And I'd say, I'm a photographer. The first few times it's like, I'm a f f photographer. <laughs> You're like stuttering. You're like, like, Oh my God, this person's going to just laugh at me. Like oh, another photographer. Um, so it's, you know, it's something that you struggle with, but you have to just put yourself out there. So do what you love and love what you do. Right. Yeah. And it works out. Some fantastic advice. Well, Matthew, we really appreciate you being on the show here. Some fantastic information. And if anyone wants to learn about uh, your business, MRM Photography, and what you do, how can they find out about that? Well, there's multiple ways to do it. The website is www.mrmphoto.com. The blog site, if you want to catch up on that, is just blog.mrmphoto.com. You can also find us on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash mrmphoto. Fantastic. Well, thank you for your time on this show. And we'll be sure to post that information for anyone looking for that, how to get to Matthew's website. And thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I had a lot of fun. Good luck to everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs>